Here's the final part of all the real estate myths that are still persisting even in today's market. Enjoy. This kind of goes back to what I was saying previously about being house poor. There's a lot of other expenses that you have to take into consideration when you're buying a home. You have utility costs. You have insurance costs. You probably have property tax costs. Your mortgage is only taking care of the principal and the interest payment to repay that loan. There are many other things that you still have to take care of when you move into a new home. Once you get an accepted offer, that doesn't necessarily mean the deal is done. There are plenty of other things that come into consideration. Once you get the home inspected, there's another round of negotiations. There could be repairs, there could be things that need to be taken care of, or sometimes you could reflect that in the price. Not only that, but the appraisal is another round of negotiations if the home doesn't appraise at or above the purchase price. Just because you get a contract signed doesn't mean it's set in stone, so don't celebrate too early. If you watch any real estate agents on television, you probably think all we do is open doors and collect checks. A lot of people think that all real estate agents make a ton of money, but the truth is that is absolutely further from the truth than you could possibly imagine. The National Association of Realtors actually puts out median income numbers for realtors every year, and it's surprisingly low compared to what people are thinking. A lot of agents do this as a part-time job, and most of them actually make less than $40,000 a year gross commissions. This is unfortunately one of the myths that I hear most about this profession. And unfortunately, we rank down with used car salesmen and other low respected professions. And that's because a lot of people think all we're trying to do is make a sale and just tell you whatever we need to to get you to make an offer. Unfortunately, that myth persists because there are people out there who do have some shady business practices that give other people a bad name. It happens in every profession. The truth is, is most real estate agents actually become realtors or members of the National, National Association of Realtors, which holds ourselves to a higher standard with a code of ethics that says we will deal honestly and fairly with all of the people that we represent. Just because you've heard that real estate agents will do anything they can just to make a sale doesn't mean that we all operate that way. Make sure you're finding the best person, the best person to suit your needs and take care of your interests. I've talked about this myth before in the past and it's one that still persists to this day. The truth is open houses very rarely sell homes. A lot of sellers ask for them because they think it's a great opportunity to get buyers through the house to take a look and ultimately get it sold. The truth is, if your agents want to hold an open house at your house, the most likely scenario is they're trying to get buyers to take and show other properties. I hear this one all the time. People want to list their home for sale by owner because they want to save money by not paying a real estate agent. If you actually look at the statistics and all of the information kept by the National Association of Realtors, it's actually statistically better and more beneficial to a seller to put more money in their pocket by having a real estate agent involved. They're better at pricing the property, they're better at marketing the property, and they're better at making sure that the negotiations on repairs are handled more efficiently, which ultimately saves money for the seller. Just because you don't have an agent involved doesn't mean that you're actually going to save any money by not paying a commission. Once you get the valuation from your real estate agent, you should always list on the high end of what they recommend, right? You're gonna have to come down off the price anyways if somebody makes an offer. That is not necessarily the case. Even in this market, while prices are increasing, if you start off too high, the chances of it selling are still pretty limited. Buyers are smart, and just because you're listing high in a competitive market doesn't mean that they're gonna be willing to pay that price. Ultimately, having it priced right from day one will put the most money back in your pocket. If you start too high and have to come down off the price, people automatically assume there's something wrong with your home. So make sure you get it priced right at the very beginning. Okay, it's a myth, I admit it. You don't have to use a real estate agent to buy a house, but you 100% should because you need a professional advocate in your corner to make sure that everything's taken care of. There's a lot more steps to buying a house than most people realize, and there's a lot of pitfalls along the way that having a professional having your back would definitely help you to avoid. I've had multiple clients over the years who have ended up purchasing homes for sale by owner without my involvement because I don't ever want to stand in the way if that's the home that they want to buy and the seller's not willing to work with an agent. 
I can tell you that every single time that that's happened in my career, every single client has come back to me and said, I wish I would have had you working for me in the long run. Just because you don't have to have an agent doesn't mean you shouldn't. So don't let this myth fool you, but definitely still use an agent when possible. Hey, I hope you've enjoyed this three-part series on real estate myths that still exist today. If you know of any others or have questions, you can always let me know in the comments below.